I'm Jennifer Hambrick, midday host of Classical 101, WOSU Public Media in Columbus. I'm in the Classical 101 studios with Columbus composer Jacob Reed and Thomas Worthington High School student Nat Hickman. The three of us are involved in a very special project having to do with poetry and music. This project is called The Poet's Song, uh, and that will be coming to the McConnell Arts Center in Worthington this Sunday afternoon in a, in a performance of the McConnell Arts Center Chamber Orchestra. This project, uh, which is a new music commissioning project, is being jointly supported by the Johnstone Fund for, for uh, New Music, the Worthington uh, Education Fund, and the McConnell Arts Center in Worthington. Um, and I, I, I will say right off the bat, I'll reiterate uh, right off the bat that I am a part of this project. So for this uh, afternoon's conversation, we'll, I'll be sort of serving in two different roles as host of this conversation and also as a participant uh, in the project that this conversation is about. So we will be exploring the processes of writing poetry and writing music, uh, which sets poetry, uh, and uh, also maybe giving you a little bit of a sneak peek into Sunday afternoon's concert at the McConnell Arts Center in Worthington. So Jacob and that thank you so much for joining me today thank you thank you a pleasure well so jacob the poet's song project was actually your idea so uh, what was kind of the inspiration for it so the initial inspiration was when i heard the soprano chelsea hart melcher uh singing for opera columbus at the uh, refectory i heard her in their lovely supper club room and i just thought that's someone i want to write music for uh and certainly that was just the idea of of writing something for her, the project really grew out of a brainstorm session I had with uh, Antoine Clark, who's the director of the McConnell Arts Center mm -hmm. Chamber Orchestra. I came to him saying, hey, there's this great soprano. I like setting um, poetry to music, and I would like to do something with Chelsea and your orchestra. And he said, that's great, but let's expand the project. Let's do more poetry. Let's do more music. And I said, sounds good to me. Uh, and when we started brainstorming, we realized, one, that I have a connection to the Worthington schools as a teacher there and that uh, Antoine knew you quite well and knew you as both mm -hmm. a musician and a poet and uh, turns out that you also have a connection to the Worthington mm -hmm. schools and so it all came together as this project about setting poetry to music. Right and and as you uh, as you just mentioned this project has so many different components uh, that have brought different parts of the Worthington community together uh, in choosing the poems that you set to music you selected a poem by the the great 13th century poet Rumi um, a poem by a local poet who happens to be me, and then you also encouraged uh, uh, students at Thomas Worthington High School to write poetry and enter a poetry contest that was part of the Poet Song Project. Yes. Uh, and that is the contest <laughs> that you won, Nat, so congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and that is how your poem ended up being one of the poems um, that Jacob set to music for Sunday's concert. Beyond that, the poetry contest was judged, I, I gather, by local judges. For the record, I was not one of those judges because right. as a different part of the, the, the project, I actually made a couple of in-class visits with students at Thomas Worthington High School and talked about poetry uh, actually in the school. So I was sort of um, kind of juried out of role <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> of judging the student, um, the student poetry contest. So from the schools to people out in the Worthington community to the McConnell Arts Center, you really engaged quite a lot of different dimensions of the community in this project and it really is um, it's just incredible actually to see it all coming kind of coming together <laughs> yes, at this point. Yes, very exciting. So Nat, I must say um, it's pretty cool I think that you won this contest. Yeah. Once again congratulations and so when you entered the contest I mean at that point in time had you been writing poetry for a while or was it something new for you? Um, so poetry has always kind of been a part of my life. My hmm. mother is a poet. Oh. She writes poetry a lot. It's, um, just kind of something that she'll just like send to me like random po like poems and stuff like that. Um, so poetry wasn't something that was like out of the blue. She'd always encouraged me to write poetry so um, this was something that I purposely wrote of course for this but I had some ideas and thoughts in my head for poetry before and specifically for this project. Uh-huh okay so uh, I know that you've got your poem with us and mm -hmm. I think you're going to read a little bit of it but what um, what what's what is the title of your poem and also what inspired some of these ideas that eventually became your poem? Yeah yeah so as it's called as seen by them um, it's more of a um, I want to say allegory almost based upon like kind of how I uh, view high school in a way and um, stresses up upon myself and other students that I see. Um, I'd like to say that I feel like I have a little bit more of a tougher time in high school than other people, not just specifically for any reason other than just I think everyone thinks that um, 
Yeah, so it's just it's kind of a bunch of emotion that was poured out one time at like two a.m. in the morning. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, it, and then I revised it a couple of times, and I won. Well, would you like to read some oh, or all yeah, of the poems? Yeah, yeah of okay. course. Um, okay. From where she sprouts to where she grows, sunk beneath where the light hits, the pressure of stacked stones lifted away by light wings. Easier to fall than to jump, harder to fly than to float, gaudy as ice on the gutters of homes. Your wings are wet at first, the rain sharp like the needles of pine once dried. When the cave gets too dark to see, like the rush season of moth migration, no beginning, no ending. Just a frame, it fits in like fall. When you shed your coat and the chrysalis breaks, the carpet of a forest floor of growth, its own type of consciousness. The world flattens and settles under sleeping stones. As for you, moth, you are back at home where you sprout and where you grow. Hmm. Nice. I, I'm going to ask you a question that um, I always have a difficult time answering when people ask it of me. Mm-hmm. So it's a little <laughs> bit of an unfair question. <laughs> okay. But I, I know you, you uh, told us a moment ago some of the things that, in general, that inspired your poem. But right. what, what to you does your poem mean? <laughs> You're right. That is a hard question to answer just kind of like out of the blue like that. Um, uh, my poem means to me that um, it's it's a circle. You have to go around and around, but uh, it gets back to you sometimes, and you get right back on the horse, and you just keep going, I think. Hmm. And I, sometimes I forget that. I, sometimes I, like everyone forgets that, I think. But um, I guess that poem is uh, realizing that, you know, it's just a cycle you got to go through. Uh-huh. Yeah. And not a bad message to kind of take away. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Put in your back pocket. Mm. Uh, and so um, here, too, another kind of question about your process. What what was your process for writing the poem and getting it to this, you know, completed stage? Did you do many drafts of it or did it just um, sort of pour forth? Yeah. So I, it was over winter break, I think, and I was just thinking about, um, writing poetry I was staying up late just because I guess that's what teenagers do on breaks and stuff <laughs> like that and I just kind of got the idea to just like maybe just start writing down what I was feeling and I always do my best writing when it's like really late at night for some reason so I had like um, a memo on my phone of just like this poem and it wasn't very good and then I kind of like tweaked it and fixed it and then you know I was like talking to my mom about it because she is a poet and she was like oh well you, this is really great I think maybe you could do it in like different like meters and stuff like that and try it in different like tempos and stuff like that and like listening to that and so I tried around and messed around with some of the words and um yeah and then it just came so mm-hmm. there were some drafts in there yeah definitely mm-hmm. probably not as much as I should have been but you know <laughs> it, it turned out good I think sure absolutely and I mean is this kind of your typical working process if you will it's when you're writing a poem do you tend to kind of go through multiple drafts or um yeah I'd say I I say I like I think I very impulsive when I write poetry I write a poem and then I'm like I like will send it to one of my friends and they'll be like oh that's good and I'm like thanks and they're like but that part was weird there and I'm like oh okay so I think it's kind of you know back and forth um mm-hmm consultating on it and stuff like that yeah, yeah. it's really I, I think it's really interesting to 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 run a poem by maybe a few different people or you know multiple mm-hmm. people anyway right um and just to kind of see how it just in general is going over it's really interesting like if you hear back from the same people that the same spot in the poem is a little bit <laughs> yeah, yeah you know then then that kind of gives you something to go with right uh, but but once in a while like I, I find that the commentary is sort of all over the map mm-hmm. and people latch on to different things sure. and then it's sort of like well okay it, it all boils down to what right. you as the poet mm-hmm. you know want to do so right. but it's so necessary to kind of get outside yourself yes. and get that feedback and I'm sure yes. you experience that as a composer absolutely it's tough you get stuck in your head and you you start to really like something and start to really hate something or or, or just can't think of another possible solution mm-hmm. to the creative problem that may be presenting itself and then to to give it to somebody else and and let them kind of shore up any self-doubt of some places or agree like okay I think this section is weak mm-hmm. and they go yeah that is I don't understand what you're doing there and then you know and then it's time to trash it and start again mm-hmm. you know so uh, that can be very helpful. But, you know, when you say, you know, time to trash it and then and start again. Yes. Do, do you actually throw away some of what you've written? So, like, I never throw <coughs> anything away. Like, even a poem that I know is kind of lame and sure. not, you know, not really ready to be out there. I'll just kind of put it in a separate folder. Mm-hmm. Sure. And then maybe come back to it like a year or two later or something like that and revisit it with new eyes. But so do you, but do you like um, actually... I will trash sketches. Yeah. Um, but uh, when, once I'm 
deep into a piece, I've converted it to the digital software, mm -hmm. and that software is keeping versions, you know, every ten minutes. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't, I'll trash it on the version I'm using, but I can always go back, mm -hmm. uh, and that actually helps because then I'm less precious, and I, well, I'll just trash it and right. try again. And if I try five solutions and somehow decide that the initial solution was the best, then I can always go back. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's good that you, it's good that you don't really throw this stuff away because you know we've heard the stories about how Brahms burned all right, of this. And that. I mean, you know, don't right. you wish you had that music now? Yes, although there's so. plenty of my pieces that I probably should go burn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I would have to just disagree. Uh, <laughs> you haven't heard them. <laughs> well, so so Jacob, as as a poet and musician, I'm I'm actually really curious to to kind of hear you talk about how you selected the three poems. Okay. Um, that you chose to set to music in this project, the poet song. Um, what kinds of things did you look for in the poems that you sort of were reading and reviewing for this project, or, or what kinds of things sort of jumped out at you from the poems that ended up sparking your interest in them as text to set to yeah. music? So the jumping off point was the Rumi poem, uh, Some Kiss. And what I love about it is it's the sort of the marriage of the humanity and nature. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and the imagery that is um, very rich, but also um, contemplative, and and I think from there, um, when we were we were discussing your poetry, I mean, you sent me a large portfolio mm. of, of poetry. Um, I was looking for a poem that yes would make sense musically, but also would tie in in some way with so R Rumi's. Um, nature and spiritual spirituality. Um, mm -hmm. So that helped me choose the one of the poems um, of yours, mm -hmm. and then we mm -hmm. put those same ideas into the the request and the contest that the, that the poems have something to do with love or spirituality or nature or some combination thereof, mm -hmm. uh, because both the Rumi and your poem Thorn Tree uh, are, have this combination of sort of human love and, and nature and spirituality that, that really works, I think, in, in mm -hmm. both of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We actually, I should say, we, we the, the McConnell Arts Center Chamber Orchestra actually just rehearsed all of these songs just just yesterday That's correct, yeah. <laughs> um, for the for the first time. And, and I had the great pleasure to, to sit and listen. And um, and it was really interesting to me to hear the flow, as it were, from one poem to the next. And mm. that was one of the things that I picked up on, you know, that all of the nature imagery and then the, certainly the sort of human and spiritual dimension in all of them as well. So, yeah. But, you know, when you start with Rumi, <laughs> I mean, that's just such an amazing starting point. You yes. really just can't ever go wrong <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> with his poetry. It's just so, so incredibly gorgeous and just luscious. Yes, it's very lush and yet very... Um, succinct and 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 short in his mm -hmm. uses of the words at the same time mm -hmm. and that to me was very inspiring mm -hmm. I, I i um i've written a piece for, that's just all couplets i know you've written lots of short poetry as well and i think that the ability to put a lot in a small space is pretty challenging and, mm -hmm. and i also uh, admire that mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. now uh, since i have heard at least one run through of right. all of your songs i'm just kind of curious since you're the composer and you're in the room here um the thing that really jumped out um, uh, at me and sort of struck me about your musical settings of these poems is just the vibrancy of the colors Ooh, in, that you that. use in your <laughs> orchestra. It's actually kind of a big orchestra yeah. um, for, for these songs. It's very, very colorful. So um, could you talk a little bit about, you know, your, you know, I'm getting down to brass tacks in That's a way, right. but sort of your, your, you're thinking about how to set these texts to music. You know, we, we have text painting. Yes. You know, something goes up and the musical line goes up. Right. You know, the bird flies away and the musical line goes up and what have you. But there's not a lot of that that I heard in your score. So um, well, the, not that there the, needs to be. Well, I think there is, but in different ways maybe <laughs> than, than those than those ways. Um, I think what I love about I don't always write um, uh, music that sets poetry, but what I do it a lot. And what I love about it is that there's a lot to mine in poetry. There's the, the, the imagery, which can then lead to text painting. Um, there's the rhythm. And then there's, of course, the even though you're going to have it sung and you're going to pitch it, there is inflection in mm -hmm. the way we read poetry and the way that Nat just read his that matters. And I don't always follow those things, but there's a lot to take from and there's a lot to sort of juggle. Okay, what do I want to pay attention to here? What do I want to not ignore but maybe go against and things like that? 
Um, and I'm happy to talk specifically about any of them. Would you like to d dive into that? Well, sure. I mean, is, is there a specific you know, place well, in one of them that really... Let's start with, with yours. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, I think, um, uh, it, you know, the, the title itself, Thorn Tree, struck me um, just because I have this image in my head of um, what a thorn tree might be. And, and there's a lot of different ones. If you, if you look it up on the Internet, you can get a lot of different images. But um, I think that, you know, that's a nice image just of itself. And I thought, okay, how do I do prickles? <laughs> How do I do brambles? How yeah. and you, you use the word brambles la later, um, and and I, I I like that. And that's there's some text painting there. So mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so the the piece begins actually with the violins um, scratching and not making a, a pretty sound, but making a quite ugly sound mm -hmm. uh, to sort of give that sort of aggressiveness that a thorn tree or the image of a thorn tree might give you. Right? I mean, it's not something you want to hug. Right. Right. And, and I, I wanted to make a sound that doesn't feel like you want to hug it either. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, you know, that's maybe sort of a different level of, of text painting, mm -hmm. but still some, some text painting there. Um, and then, you know, um, for, your, for your poem in general, I think that um, not only is there this striking um, vivid imagery, which made me want to use those vivid colors that you mm -hmm. heard. I'm glad you heard those mm -hmm. yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then I also think there's a lot of uh, drama, and I don't mean like melodrama, sure. too much drama, but there's a lot of sort of human emotion that's right out there on, on the in the words um, about being hurt um, and and so for, for for that setting I wanted the the music to be dramatic and to have some fairly uh, large dynamic contrasts and some sounds that kind of come out quickly from nowhere mm -hmm. and kind of surprise you mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the strings snap they do a pizzicato snap which makes a pretty a jarring sound um, that razor edged word, you know, something that cuts really sharply. Mm -hmm. um, so that's uh, that's sort of what I was thinking and pulling out uh, some of what I was pulling out of, of your poetry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and 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 all of that, all of that sound. The 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 first chord in your setting of yes. this poem is is just it. It is so. It's very dissonant. Yes. Um, and I've never heard a chord quite like this chord. Um, and I just thought, know, knowing the text, I just thought that was perfect. Um, I'm glad you liked it. You know, the, the, the first two lines of the poem are, do not touch me, I am covered with thorns. So, um, uh, you know, and, it, and the poem starts out in a very dark and brittle kind of way. And yes. so you embody that sort of brittleness in the sounds of the orchestra, the, the tense and dissonant chords. And you mentioned the, the sort of snapping sound of the pizzicati. Mm -hmm. and, and I think there's some colenio bits in there. Yes, definitely. Um, for the brambles, maybe. Yes. Um, and it all, at, at all, I, th I thought, um, worked very, very well. But then the poem kind of changes in the middle. Yes. It goes from very dark and hurt to sort of very hopeful. But at the same time, what I, what I took away from uh, the yesterday's rehearsal of the, of the piece was that your setting moves in the direction of hope as the poem moves in the direction of hope, but doesn't yet arrive completely at hope hope that's very and perceptive peace, and, which and is what i intended okay good i don't know which, if you uh, like that or not yeah, but well, it's no, no, what no, I it's, intended. It's, it's perfect because the poem doesn't okay. arrive at a complete point of yes yeah that's what you know, I all thought. of this is behind in, in and, my interpretation yeah yeah and a complete point of resolution and repose so that was that's a i, I thought a very um effective well, good reading <laughs> good i'm glad I, I got it right yeah 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 no and so and this is this is and you've sort of treated each of the poems in this very um um insightful way well, um, thank you I, that, that was my that was my attempt um and so you know then once you chose the poems you wanted to set the next steps and the next that eventually led you to completing the musical settings of these three poems i mean did you t go through a lot of drafts and i mean was this sort of Certainly. an angst-ridden process for uh, you or? i wouldn't say <laughs> angst-ridden but it was i think it was a challenge because it was a lot of music to write in yeah. a short amount of time mm -hmm. um but it was also really fun i mean i don't i i, I can't talk to Rumi. Mm -hmm. um, but I got to sit with you and discuss your poem and 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 really question words and choices and learn from you. Okay, why did you choose that word and what does that mean and how does that work? And we got to do the same mm -hmm. thing. And we also talked about what kind of music um, Matt likes and 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 what inspires him. And and I tried to pull on those th from those conversations to guide my um, my settings. And um, I, I found it quite fun. Mm -hmm. It, it was it was a good time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's always exciting when a you know a piece of art like a poem or a painting inspires another piece of art yes. like a piece of music, and you know it just kind of 
the rising tide lifts all boats. So <laughs> yeah. once again, uh, we've been chatting with uh, Columbus composer Jacob Reed and Thomas Worthington High School student Nat Hickman. Jacob has set one of Nat's poems, one of my poems, and one of Rumi's poems to music as part of the poet's song. Uh, and these three works will be given their world premieres this Sunday, April 29th at 3 p.m. by the McConnell Arts Center Chamber Orchestra at the McConnell Arts Center in Worthington. Uh, Antoine Clark, as you mentioned, is the orchestra's music director and I think also artistic director, and he yes. will be conducting. Soprano Chelsea Hart Melcher will be singing the, uh, the, the solo role in these songs. Uh, and also on the program, which is called The Words Beneath the Sound, uh, are other works of music that have texts, uh, including William Walton's Facade Suite Number no. 2 with poetry by Edith Sitwell. Uh, I will narrate that. And also Stravinsky's The Soldier's Tale, which I have actually um, written on commission from the McConnell Arts Center, a text adaptation, which I will narrate on Sunday as well. Uh, that uh, particular performance of Stravinsky's uh, The Soldier's Tale celebrates the 100th anniversary of the premiere of, a soldier's, of The Soldier's Tale. So that's a special occasion as well. And again, the concert is this Sunday, April 29th at 3 at the McConnell Arts Center in Worthington. I'm Jennifer Hambrick, midday host of Classical 101 WOSU Public Media in Columbus. Thanks for joining us.